Good morning, friends. Time to sing. I know, doesn't it feel like it should be the time to sing? Are you anxious to sing around? Well, you have to come back next week because we're not singing around today. But I do invite you to, to rise in body and or spirit and let's sing together hymn number 1052. This is Jim Scott's wonderful, The Oneness of Everything. If you're joining us online, you can find the lyrics posted in the chat. Yeah, the Jumbotron up front. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Olympia UU Church. Our community envisions an interconnected world that is loving, just, and healthy. We commit to live out our mission to welcome and wonder, embrace and empower, bridge and become. Thank you for joining us today. You are welcome here just as you are. Whatever beliefs sustain you, whomever you love, however you understand and express your identity, and in all the ways you are still becoming the person you will be. My name is Ann Radford. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a member of the worship arts team. Leading worship with me today is our minister, Reverend Mary Gear, and Troy Fisher, our music director. Here are a few things that you should know about our service today. We are streaming live on Zoom and YouTube, and the service is being recorded. 
For those here in the sanctuary, you can see subtitles on the screen that may sometimes be different than the actual words spoken. <laughs> you can see the subtitles in the chat on Zoom if you're online. Over here we have fluffy chairs and activities so your hands can be comfortable. We are a multi-generational community and we value our young ones. Kids, babies, and teens are all welcome in the sanctuary. There's also nursery care and a story time for children in the classroom wing. Youth in middle and high school will meet at 1130. This month, they're focusing on the themes of interdependence, taxes, and Earth Day. We are grateful for the many hands that have helped make worship happen this morning. Thank you to all who contribute in so many ways. After the service, everyone will have a chance to discuss reflection questions offered by Reverend Mary. For those online, we invite you to go into a breakout room for a virtual coffee chat. For those in person, please stay for coffee and fellowship in the Commons. At noon today, we will host speakers from the Thurston County Dispute Resolution Center for a workshop of skills and practice for communication to connect. In a time of divisiveness, we can all learn more about how to bridge differences. We'll offer a light lunch in classroom three for all who wish to stay for the workshop at noon, and we'll be live streaming too so just return to this Zoom room at noon. Our next children's class on Thursdays begins this week and is about the interdependent web of life. Kids from ages five through 10 can register for this eight week class all about our interconnected world and our human place in nature. Classes are from 6.30 to 7.30 following the Thursday community dinner. And last, we are well on our way to the stewardship goal this month. As of yesterday, there are 206 pledges committing to 500, 400, sorry, $457.12. And while this is great news, we are still far short of our goal of $571,446. Thank you for those who have pledged so far. We hope to finish receiving pledges in the next few weeks so we can plan the budget and programs for next year. So if you've not pledged yet or if you have questions, visit the stewardship table that will be in the commons after the service or visit the website at the link in the chat. There are many things happening here at OUUC. Check out the Tuesday electronic update or the website for the most up-to-date information. Now let us open our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. It is good to be together. This morning, we join Unitarian Universalist congregations around the world in lighting a chalice, the symbol of our faith tradition. If you are online and have a chalice or a candle, please join me as we light our chalices together with the words of Reverend Hope Johnson entitled, One Love. We are one, a diverse group of proudly kindred spirits, here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. Welcome everyone. I'm Reverend Mary and I use she, her pronouns. I am a white older woman with brown and silver hair. I wear glasses and today my stole is black with orange and red flames from our chalice. Our opening words today are offered by the Reverend Carol Thomas Sissel. We are one. We are family. We are connected. 
by bone and blood, mind and heart, and sometimes bricks and mortar. Like the finest woven tapestries of old and the spices blended and stirred into our family's secret recipes, our lives are intentionally intertwined. And we are made, no, we are fashioned into a stronger community by those connections. This interlacing, intertwining, intermingling of our existence makes each of us whole. This interlacing of our lives makes us whole, happiness and sorrow. This intermingling of our lives makes us whole, lament and laughter. This intertwining of our lives makes us whole, blessings and burdens. May we allow the magic and mystery, often named spirit, to keep us connected long after today's service has ended. Come, let us worship together. Let's sing together again out of the gray hymnal, hymn number 134, Our World is One World. I invite you to rise in body and our spirit. Let's sing together. seem to have an overflow this morning, so if you have a seat by you, if you could raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this month is stewardship season here at OUUC where we make pledges of financial support for this community. Stewardship is both a practical and a spiritual practice. It takes all of us to support this congregation we love and to provide the resources that pay our staff and our bills. Joining our individual resources to do this is a profound act of community. Each stewardship season, we have an annual opportunity to pause and notice what we value and to give as an expression of gratitude for what we have received. Each Sunday, a different member of the OUUC community will share a brief testimonial. Today's testimonial will be shared by Wendy Stephenson. Thank you. My name is Wendy Stephenson. I use she, her pronouns. I have been coming to OUUC since 2017. I've been drawn to OUUC by the kindness of the community, the openness to different spiritual paths, 
the encouragement to seek the truth from within, and the social activism. Oh yes, the activism. The activism gives me purpose and camaraderie with this group of kind, spiritual, and truth-seeking individuals. I am currently active in the environmental action team. OUUC is one of my social communities. I derive and give nurturance here. I am connected here. And the more involved I become, the deeper my connection is. I am also proud to be part of OUUC because of the good it does in the community, from share the plate to work on anti-racism and houselessness. For years, I have pledged to OUUC as a friend, but not yet as a member. As connected as I am, I have felt reluctant to become a member because sometimes OUUC just feels too churchy. <laughs> I have actually gone through the new membership classes twice, <laughs> but I didn't go through with membership because it felt too exclusionary to have members and non-members. So this is where I sat when a petition to the General Assembly was circulated through our very own environmental action team. It called for divestment of fossil fuels from the UUA Common Endowment. But I couldn't sign the petition because I was not a member. Even though at the time, I was co-chair of the environmental action team. <laughs> Suddenly, membership took on a whole new meaning. I realized that membership conveys both responsibility and privilege. Responsibility to protect and nurture the congregation and its governing institution, and the privilege to affect change within it. I value OUUC for what it stands for, for the good it does in the community, for the resource it is for all of us, and for what I get out of my relationship with it. I will become a member this year, and I will pledge because OUUC does good, and it is here for all of us. And by the way, the Environmental Action Team is still working on fossil fuel divestment, and there is more information on that in the table in the Commons. Thank you. At this time in our service, we pause to receive an offering. Our congregation is self-supporting. All funding for our presence here comes from the contributions of members and friends of this congregation. This offering is a time to engage in the spiritual practice of generosity, remembering that each of us has the power to give and share our resources. When we combine our gifts to create an offering, together we are able to do more than any of us can do alone. If you are new or visiting us for the first time or the second time, you are our guest and we do not expect you to contribute. However, if you're moved to be part of our offering, what you share will be most gratefully received. The offering collected here does two things. It helps support the ongoing work of this congregation, which is also supported by your regular pledges. This offering also supports an organization that serves our community in harmony with our Unitarian Universalist values. Our Share the Plate organization for March and April is the Hawk Foundation for Research and Education in African Culture which de dedicates itself to the promotion of education, holistic health, and trauma healing in the African-American community, with recognition that when one is healed, it touches those around them. 
The Hawk Foundation provides African and African American music and history education, building confidence and community among the young people in our area. May the offering now be generously given as it is gratefully received. Thank you for your generous gifts and all the ways that you share them. We came together as individuals this morning, bringing all that is in our lives. We come together to create community. So let's open our hearts to the complexity of life as we place stones in the water of community. You will hear a drumbeat as we share today. It helps us remember that our individual hearts beat, and together we create the heartbeat of our community. So right now, let's just take a deep breath together, in and out, as we open our hearts to the complexity of all that is in our lives and our community today. We extend our hearts to our Muslim siblings as they near the end of the holy month of Ramadan, a month of fasting and prayer. For those who follow Islam, this is a month of spiritual practice focused on generosity and compassion. And we extend our hearts to Muslims around the world, and most especially those in Gaza. For those joining us online today, I invite you to share from your heart by entering in the chat. Those of us in the sanctuary will be able to see your sharing on the screen. And for those on site today, I invite you to come forward if there's something you would like to bring into this community. You may place a stone in the water as you hold your sharing in your heart. Please come up by the side aisle and return by the center aisle. So let's just pause to hear the heartbeat of our community as we reach out our hearts in love and care 
to all those who share today. We place a stone in the water for all that has been shared online, shared from the heart. And one more stone placed in the water for all that we hold in our hearts and that remains unspoken. I invite you to be in whatever way is comfortable for you for prayer and meditation. This prayer is offered by the Reverend Matt Alspa. Breathe with me. Breathe with me the breath of life. Inhale, inspire, inspiration. Rua, Numa, Spiritus, the Holy Spirit, the many names for breath. Breathe with me. Know that with each breath we take in molecules of air that were breathed by every person that ever lived. Breathe with me. The breath. Breathe the breath of Jesus, of Moses, of Muhammad, of the Buddha. Breathe with me and know that we are all interdependent, that the spirit of life flows through all of us. 
breathe with me as we come together to do the holy work of interconnection and relationship, that our work here may be blessed. Amen. Let's hold a moment of silence together. remain seated as we sing together hymn number 1060 as we sing of hope and joy first reading today. Last fall, the Article II Commission of the Unitarian Universalist Association released the final draft of its proposed revision to Article II of the UUA bylaws that define the purpose and values of the UUA. 
Their work spanned almost three years, including hundreds of meetings, receiving input and feedback from over 11,000 UUs. The Commission's work identified seven core UU values, one of which is interdependence. The Commission defines the core UU value of interdependence this way. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. We covenant to cherish Earth and all beings by creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. With humility and reverence, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life and we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. In 1985, by an almost unanimous vote of the annual gathering of Unitarian Universalists called the General Assembly, the delegates gathered in Atlanta, Georgia, adopted the seven principles and six sources of Unitarian Universalism, defining the guiding values for UUs. And while this simple statement sounds like adopting the seven principles and six sources was a quick and easy process, <laughs> it was anything but. In 1961, when the Unitarians and the Universalists consolidated their two religious organizations into one, it was a contentious process that took many years to hammer out shared and guiding principles. And so it was with some trepidation that UUs in the 1970s sought to change the original principles. And it was brave UU women who led the movement for change. Because you see, the original 1961 principles were full of patriarchal and blatantly sexist language. Things like affirming the dignity of man. In addition, there was consensus that Unitarian Universalism was much more than its Judeo-Christian heritage, which was the only source mentioned, and there was gr growing concern about the relationship of humans to the environment. And so in the mid-1970s, a work group was formed to draft new principles. The original draft was of six principles and five sources, and that first came before a General Assembly in 1981, and it immediately caused contention and conflict. <laughs> so over the next few years, there was much discussion, which led to the inspired suggestion to separate the principles and the sources, and then the suggestion to add a seventh principle and a sixth source that would recognize humanity's part in the interconnected web of life. And so by 1985, the proposed changes were adopted. Now you might think that the idea of interdependence was new to Unitarian Universalism in the 1980s with the addition of the seventh principle affirming the interconnected web and I'll just let you know I'm gonna get churchy here and talk about theology. <laughs> but interconnection was part of Unitarian and Universalist theology from the very beginning. Unitarians emphasized the inherent goodness and value of each person, rejecting the idea that humans are born in sin, depraved and drawn to evil. Early Unitarian minister William Ellery Channing preached about human likeness to God and that it was our connection and commitment to God, the spirit, the universe, whatever you name it, that led us to improve ourselves and our society. So while Unitarians tended to place individuals at the center of their theology, our Universalist ancestors centered God's universal grace for all people. 
Universalist minister Hosea Ballou spoke of God's desire for human joy and a society that reflected the qualities of love and care for everyone. Yet there is a shadow side to our theological lineage and heritage, one that can be mistrued as interconnection. Both traditions believed in the perfectibility of the individual character and the perfectibility of society. And that it is through our charitable works that we would per perfect ourselves and our society. This perspective tends to center the individual, asserting that we will become righteous through our actions. And this can contribute to a sense of paternalism, hierarchy, and superiority. It leaves no room for struggle, failure, or the reality of how we hurt each other. It leaves no room for the reality of life. It doesn't recognize how we are truly interdependent. This perspective of perfection and paternalism led some prominent Unitarians to delay or withhold their support for emancipation of the slaves in the 19th century. And it led some prominent Universalists to support the theory of eugenics in the early 20th century. The perspective of paternalism, hierarchy, and superiority shows up in our modern Unitarian Universalist Association, and in our UU congregations. Now we call it white supremacy culture, patriarchy, classism, and other oppressions. And so now we are coming around full circle as we prepare once again to vote to modify our UU principles and sources. This June, at the annual gathering of Unitarian Universalists that is still called the General Assembly, we will vote on whether to adopt values gleaned from our lineage and informed by our current context. OUUC will be able to send seven delegates to the General Assembly to vote. If you are interested in being part of this historic vote as an OUUC delegate, please reach out to me or Reverend Sarah. So with this complicated lineage and history, and despite our living tradition that adapts to current times, we are still faced with a fundamental tension in our theology, the push and pull between individualism and interdependence. Reading is from Finding Hope in Uncomfortable Truth by Alice Karima Newberry in the 2022 fall-winter issue of the UU World. When we're living with these existentially foreboding times, our first response to the harm and violence around us must be to build kinship with one another. Community building offers radical hope. It reminds us that despite a world filled with trauma, violence, greed, and badness of many kinds, we're able to claim immense power by knowing that there is life worth fighting for. When we build resilient relationships with each other, 
we build networks that the system cannot destroy. When we actively choose to fight for life, we're claiming what cannot be taken from us, hope. One way to consider the current seven principles is that they are bookended by the first and seventh principles, which are theological statements. The first principle asserts that we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person. The seventh principle asserts that we affirm respect for the interdependent web of life of which we are a part. The first and the seventh principles address the individual and our interdependence. The second through the sixth principles have more to do with process and behavior. They speak of things like justice, equity, acceptance, freedom, responsibility, democracy. Now the proposed update to the UU principles that we will vote on in June is in the form of core values represented by this flower graphic. The current seven principles are in this flower. They are just expressed differently and more in line with the cultural and theological context of these times. Our lineage and history are there and the statement of who Unitarian Universalists are is adapted to current sensibilities. We do this as a liberal religious tradition that is always growing and changing. And what I find interesting about th is that the tension of individualism and interdependence is still present in these core values. And I see an intentional effort to address this tension. Interdependence is expressed as a core value all its own. It's the petal at the top. And it is our spiritual theme for this month. The affirmation of the individual is expressed in two different core values. Equity, which was our spiritual theme for last month, and pluralism, which is our spiritual theme for next month. The core value of equity declares that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness and goes on to covenant that we will use our resources to build and sustain inclusive and sustainable communities. The core value of pluralism celebrates that we are all diverse, sacred beings and that we embrace commonalities and differences with love, capital L, love, curiosity, and respect. And what I see in each of these core values is an effort to place the individual squarely in the context of community. Yes, we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person regardless of our differences and we covenant to build communities that are, in, that are inclusive, treating differences with respect, curiosity, and love. Rather than demanding that we center either the individual or the collective, the proposed core values offer us a both and. To me, this shows a maturity in our evolution as a faith tradition away from binary thinking toward inclusivity. And just like the current principles and purposes statements in Article 2, the proposed Article 2 update also clearly states our covenant. Our religious tradition, Unitarian Universalism, is non-creedal. We don't tell people what to believe. So what binds us together is not our beliefs, which might be quite varied, but how we will be together, how we agree to be together, and we call those covenants. Each of the core values you saw in the flower 
comes with a statement of covenant about how we will be together. And covenants are one way that we address the reality that we struggle, we make mistakes, and we hurt each other. It is a way that we approach one another with humanity and humility, recognizing that we are not here to be perfect, but we are here to notice the grace and connection that is already among us. And one of the ways that I find helpful to frame this tension with individualism, interdependence, and covenants is the idea of me space, you space, and we space. So me space and you space recognizes that we are individuals and there are rights and responsibilities that come with being an individual. We space is where we intersect. It's the space between us. It's the strands in the interconnected web. We space is what covenants address, the space between us, how we will be together in the space that we share. And just like the Unitarian Universalist Association and most other UU congregations, this congregation has a covenant. We have been in the process of revisiting that covenant for the past 18 months with a proposal to modify the current covenant to remove some ableist language and to add a behavioral covenant to the current covenant. You can find printed information about this project in the commons after the service and on the website at the link in the chat. You'll be hearing more about this as we approach the annual meeting in June. And the workshop after the service today offered by the Dispute Resolution Center is intended to help us build the skills needed to live our core values of independence, equity, and pluralism, and to live into our covenant. The workshop is about how to communicate across differences, finding commonalities where possible, and building bridges where needed. The workshop is online and on site from 12 to 2 with a light lunch provided for those who are on site. We hope you'll join us to do the sacred work of building community and creating covenant. I often say that what we learn and practice here is what we bring out there learning how to be together in ways that embrace commonalities and differences with respect, curiosity, and love is so needed in our divided and divisive culture. We are still emerging from the pandemic, figuring out how to be in a very different world than four years ago. We are experiencing a climate crisis which our speaker, Peter Jabin, spoke so eloquently about just a few weeks ago. And we are experiencing unprecedented challenges to our democracy. And we know that many of the practices and systems that we have in place are not working for black, indigenous, and people of color. We're calling for racial justice. So the times, they need changing. Our final reading is the task of the religious community by Reverend, Dar Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed. The central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind each to all. There is a connectedness, a relationship discovered amid the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others. Once felt, it inspires us to act for justice. 
It is the church that assures us that we are not struggling for justice on our own, but as members of a larger community. The religious community is essential. For alone, our vision is too narrow to see that all, all that must be seen, and our strength too limited to do all that must be done. Together, our vision widens and our strength is renewed. Like many others, I believe that the earth will survive this phase in its long history. She, Gaia, has survived many crises. Whether humanity survives, I think, is an open question. The best chance we have of survival is if we recognize our interdependence and figure out how we will live in relationship with each other, with the beings that we share this earth with, and with Gaia herself. This is countercultural in a society that reveres rugged individualism. This is sacred work that requires a spiritual foundation that recognizes the dignity and worth of individuals and our dependence on each other. This work is absolutely countercultural to the American hyper individualism. And this is why we need each other in a faith community. Now, you use are not the only tr faith tradition to emphasize interconnection and interdependence. Modern-day Buddhist theologians and social reformers like the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh preached interconnection as a foundation for justice. Modern-day Christians like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Archbishop Desmond Tutu spoke of interdependence as the foundation for justice. Young activists like Adrian Marie Brown, Tima Okun, Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi are all teaching and modeling what it means to use interdependence as a foundation for justice. Muslims and Jews around the world are preaching interconnection as a foundation for justice as we call for a ceasefire and release of hostages in Jerusalem and Gaza. The theology of interdependence connects Unitarian Universalism to other traditions as well. And I believe that acting in ways that, we, that show that we are interdependent is the only way we humans will survive what is ahead. We know now that survival of the fittest means that those most likely to survive are those who can be in community with kindness and cooperation. We see this in nature and in human behavior. Even Darwin commented on cooperation as a fundamental thing that he saw in nature. The time, one of the times that we see altruism care for each other is in a crisis. And we are in a crisis, several of them. And the way through a crisis, this crisis, these crises before us, this is the same way it has always been. People coming together to name what is happening and to do what is needed. We must not only recognize our interdependence, but act as if we believe it. That is the work of justice in a culture that prioritizes the rights of the individual and minimizes or erases our responsibilities to each other. The pandemic taught us that we are connected. What we did regarding COVID-19 affected the health, well-being, and the lives of others. And what others did affected us. When the world shut down to help stop the spread of the virus, the world quieted. 
the smog cleared, the smog over China cleared. Wildlife came out again, the birds, the wolves, the wildcats, and nature, Gaia, took a breath. Now we've roared back with human impacts on the environment even more than in pre-pandemic times. And we just completed the hottest 10 months in history. And while I know that we can't be in crisis mode and shut down all the time, I wonder if we learned the lessons of the pandemic at all and how quickly we forget. Now I've told the story before of the inspiration I got from a friend some years ago when I was feeling despair about the state of the world. She reminded me that everything is connected. And so she said, just pick an issue and work on it in whatever way that you can. If you work on poverty, you will address climate justice. If you work on racial justice, you will affect economic justice. If you work on democracy, you will have an impact on reproductive justice. Maybe what you can do is vote and encourage your like-minded friends and family to do the same. Maybe what you can do is to support your trans child or grandchild and their friends. Maybe what you can do is to send money to groups helping women access reproductive health care across state lines. Maybe you can help repair damaged relationships in your neighborhood and community. And maybe you can help address racism in Olympia. Just find something and do it. And underneath all of this is a theology of interdependence. We are connected. Everything is connected, and we need each other. Let's live as if this were true, because deep down, I think we all know that it is. So I'm going to ask you to do one thing this next week, and it is the spiritual practice of namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word that translates as I bow to the divine in you. And if you're not comfortable with the language of the divine, you might just think the light in me sees the light in you. Or you might simply say and think, I see you. I see you. This is a simple spiritual practice, easy and profound. In that one word, namaste, we are honoring we space. And we are acknowledging that we are all connected. Of course, it will take much more than this practice to heal the world. And it is a practice to remind us that we are connected as we begin again and again, over and over. So let's try it together right now, if you're willing. I invite you to turn to someone near you, or if you're online, look at your screen and find someone to offer the sacred blessing. The practice is to place your hands together at your heart center and bow as you say, namaste. Namaste. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. Namaste. In the sacredness of this we space, let's just hold a moment of silence together.
invite you to go to hymn number 175 in the Gray Hymn Book. Let's rise and sing together. We celebrate the web of life. We extinguish our chalice with these words from the Reverend Peter Rabel. We build on foundations we did not lay. We warm ourselves by fires we did not light. We sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. We drink from wells we did not dig. We profit from persons we did not know. This is as it should be. Together we are more than any one person could ever be. Together we can build across the generations. Together we can renew our hope and faith in the life that is yet to unfold. Together we heed the call to ministry of care and justice. We are ever bound in community. May it always be so. May you go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Thank you.